Now comes the picture. <laughs> 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 The first electrical bulbs, Swan Edison, there was a German inventor also involved here, some names have been forgotten. But the very first electrical bulbs <coughs> were fitted into gas chandeliers. So looking at it, you say, this is gas light. Of course, they fitted exactly the same gas burners that were around, and they fitted an electrical bulb. And people were afraid of the new electric light. Was it dangerous? Was it toxic? And the very first electric bulbs, they would try to use a match to light it up. <laughs> because they were unfamiliar with the fact that you shouldn't use a match. And it came more and more. Okay. Reading lamps. And please note the green lamp shade. Because we are forest animals, we are pack monkeys. We lived in that forest for millions of years, and it's nothing like green to suit our eyes. So reading, writing, welding, what have you, give green to your good eyes. It's a restaurant, and it's a tonic, and it's been known for a long while. So the old lamps were eventually fitted with green. And these are the first generations, but they came more. The neon light, the fluorescent light, came around 1910, extensive use in 1920, 1930. And we are the first neon generations, really the first electrical generation, so to say. This is cold light, because you can touch a fluorescent tube, you can touch a neon tube and say, it isn't that hot. And the technician will say, but it's 5,000 degrees Kelvin, but it doesn't have a temperature of that. These are the cold light sources. They are, in, they are um, discharged, meaning that you actually have sparks, tiny intermittent sparks, at a tremendous speed that you cannot perceive. Which also means that some young, was there a question? Do interrupt if you need to make questions. It means that these light sources are very new to our biosystem. They oscillate at a very rapid rate, and many epileptics, many electroallergic cases will react to it, and will not enjoy it. Here is another object, fiber optics, and we're approaching modern age. So just like you can hose water in a hose, you can actually hose light in a cable made of plastic or glass or quartz. Or it could be made out of synthetics. It could also be made out of membrane tissue. This could be a protein tissue. Connective tissue acts like fiber optics. So large parts of our body are fiber optics. And this is known in acupuncture, in light puncture, color puncture, that you can apply a light source and you will see the light energy coming out somewhere else. So you just pipe it down the hose. So we are like light pipes actually. And I came a new step, the LEDs, light emitting diodes. The light is generated not by classical optics, but it's actually generated by annihilation. An electron meets what's known as a hole. And when an electron combines with its mirror image, it just becomes pure energy. So this is a light source. Anadi will also show you a lot about this. Experiments, what you can do with LEDs. Nobody had ever seen this before. An efficiency rate that is untold of. Purity, direction. And then there was a step more. Here it starts. This is Theodore Maiman, Californian technician. He worked in Palo Alto, Bell Technology Laboratories. He invented around 1960 a light source that was revolutionary. Einstein spoke about it, but never lived to see it. And that was a laser. Light amplification by stimulated emitted radiation. You needn't remember, but it's an acronym. So he invented by stimulated radiation a light source of a purity that no one had ever seen. He passed away two years ago, so Theodore is gone, but his gift to us is still here.